Hello there, it's Bike Tour and Mike here. I'm in a bit of an unusual setting this week. Uh, we're in a place called Karlstad in the southern part of Sweden. This is not the typical tent I'm bringing on my bike tours. This uh, one is uh, suitable for six persons, I think. I uh, was thinking about doing a Q&A video this week. And since it's really bright and also very windy today, I thought we'd film that video inside of our really huge family car camping tent. So tag along. Earlier this week I asked a question to my subscribers to send in your questions regarding basically anything bike touring related or not. And all of the questions in this Q&A came from the community tab and uh, to make sure that you're able to send me questions for the next Q&A make sure that you have clicked the little uh, notification bell right by the subscribe button. If you do that, you will be notified whenever I post something in the community tab. And I also post a lot of other things in the community tab, such as photos from my tours, like my upcoming tour on the Wilderness Road here in a week or two. So make sure you've clicked the little notification tab so you won't miss out on those photos. Well, to start off the questions, I got a question from someone called Moose who asks What do you do for a living and how did you meet Bicycle Touring Pro? Well, to answer the first question, my occupation is an environmental engineer for a big mining company here in Sweden. So I basically monitor all of our emissions to the air and the water surrounding the big factory that I work at. And the other question, how I met Darren from Bicycle Touring Pro. Well, Darren had made a couple of tours in uh, the area where I live. So I basically mailed him and told him that uh, if he ever was uh, cycling by our town of Schlefto, that he was welcome to stay at my house. And he mailed me back a couple of days later and told me that he and three of his friends were actually coming by Schlefto a uh, couple of days later so they ended up staying at our house for a night and I also joined them on their tour for a day and we stayed in touch over the winter and I joined him Kevin and Line for a tour down in the Czech Republic the following summer. Paige Pittman asks have you experienced close calls with cars and how do you keep yourself safe on the road? Where I live, uh, the cars are really few and far between, so that isn't really a big problem, except for when I'm uh, commuting to work, I usually have a really bright orange vest or jacket on me, so I'm able to be really visible for the car drivers. I also use a rear bike light on the bike as well. And I've been really lucky, I've never really had a close call when I been out on my international tours either. I was cycling down a really sketchy road in Provence, France when I did my tour there last year, but that was pretty much it. I usually go touring down in Europe during the spring or the fall, so I try to stay out of the really hectic months, such as July and August down there. Next question is from uh, Professor Krastavac Lee, who asks, do you have any tours planned for the winter and uh, I have a tour coming up here in just about a week called the Wilderness Road here in Sweden and uh, I think that is supposed to take around five or six days or so and I really hope to be able to do another week-long tour in the autumn I'm not sure where uh, if the border to Norway is open, I'm uh, aiming for Lofoden or Senja Islands. 
but if the border is still closed I'm uh, probably doing a tour here in uh, the northern parts of Sweden. The professor also asks do you have any advice for a first solo tour and I have a lot of tips on solo touring in fact I did a whole video on this topic just a couple of weeks ago so instead of me retelling all that again you can just click the link up in the corner here to take you to that certain video and the third question from the professor is if I know which of the Eurovelos who is easiest to start with and after doing a little bit of research and just common knowledge my suggestion would be to go and do the Eurovelo 15 or the Eurovelo 6 since both of those tours follow river banks so they're quite flat the first one is uh, following the Rhine River starting from Holland I think all the way down to Switzerland and the Eurovelo 6 follows the Danube River who basically goes through the whole of Europe. Try the Eurovelo 15 or the Eurovelo 6 if you want to have a pretty easy and light bike tour. Next question is from Pumpkin Village and he says I can call him Al as well. <laughs> Do you do any other activities to stay in shape besides biking? Well, during the summer I usually go out running two or three times a week. And during the winter I'm uh, moonlighting as an ice hockey referee. So I usually have uh, around two or three games each week. And uh, that is pretty good training as well. Since skating and cycling uses basically the same muscle types. I actually got into cycling when I was training for my hockey seasons maybe 20 years ago. The cycling and uh, skating sort of balances out each other so they're really beneficial for each other. And he also asks how many miles or kilometers do you ride to get ready for a tour? And I'm sorry to be boring here but I really don't go out training for my bike tours since I'm commuting to work about 34 kilometers each day five days a week which I think it's about 20 miles. I basically commute five days a week and I have around 34 or 20 miles to work and I usually start commuting in the beginning of March and uh, the first bike tour I go on is usually in the beginning or middle of April. So I don't know how many miles or kilometers that adds up to but my tip is just to do some everyday exercise and that should be enough for your first bike tour. A guy called Andy Smallwood sent me the next question and he wants to know if I have a few tips on places to visit for a three week tour in Sweden. If you have the possibility to fly into Stockholm and fly home from another airport you have basically endless of possibilities. My recommendation would be to aim for the Sverigeleden or the Swedish bike trail that basically goes from the south of Sweden all the way up to the north of Sweden. That trail is actually better than the Eurovelo 7 that kind of follows the coast in Sweden or it really doesn't follow the coast it, it goes maybe 20 kilometers away from the coast you don't really see the the sea or anything um, you mainly just uh, crisscross between the bigger towns so if you want to experience small town Sweden with a lot of car free roads you should aim for the Sverigeleden instead of the Eurovelo 7. So my tip would be to start in Stockholm and make your way up along the Sverigeleden up to maybe Umeå, Skellefteå or Luleå. Those are pretty big towns along the coast where you can take a flight down back to Stockholm and back to your home country again. And if you have the time I would also recommend to take a detour for a couple of days to do the Vilmarksvägen basically in the middle of Sweden. That's the tour I'm aiming to do in a week's time here. I think that's a really special tour if you're from outside of Sweden. You're probably gonna see a lot of wildlife and uh, really stunning views as well if you take the Vilmarksvägen. And he also wants to know what is the best time to do a bike tour in Sweden. And that is easy, that is during the three summer months. 
the hard thing here for me as a Swede is to pronounce those months correctly. <laughs> so uh, during the months of June, July and August, I think I finally nailed those first two months right. <laughs> Okay, next question is from a guy called Fred Klaus Egger. Uh, have you ever used a trailer for bike touring? Well, I've actually toured with a trailer a couple of times, but those times have been when we've been out touring with the whole family. And that trailer has actually been a sort of a baby trailer uh, where I've just basically put all the kids stuff in the trailer since uh, they don't have any panniers on their bikes. So usually when I've toured with said trailer, I've uh, had a loaded touring bike as well, plus the trailer <laughs> to be able to stay in the same pace as the kids. So I'm really not the person to speak on touring with a trailer. I usually just go with a classical pannier setup instead. Next question is from a guy called Rusty Brockman and he wants to know what type of sleeping pad I recommend for bike touring. I usually have my C to Summit Comfort Plus sleeping pad and I actually have it back in the tent here and it looks like this. <laughs> and while that sleeping pad is a bit on the heavier side since it's insulated which is good for me since I'm living in cold Sweden, <laughs> there are a lot of lighter versions of it. This is probably the heaviest one. They have a ultra light version as well that probably weighs a third of mine. But what I really like about this type of sleeping pad is that you get these individual sprung cells that move around when you move around. So they sort of balance you all the time. And the other thing is that uh, since the cells are separated into two different layers, even if you have a flat on the underside you can still sleep comfortably through the night and repair your sleeping pad in the morning. A flat on the underside really doesn't affect the top side. So I really like that sleeping pad and I'm uh, probably gonna do a review of it pretty soon. Paul Crossweight wants to know how do you cope with wet conditions regarding footwear? Do you wear overshoes? Well Paul I usually wear overshoes when I'm commuting since I have a possibility to dry those overshoes either at home or at work. But when I'm on a bike tour I really don't like to use them. I've used them a couple of years ago but uh, what usually happens is I get them wet during the first or second day and then I never seem to get them dry during the rest of the bike tour, even though I hang them out in the air to dry. So what I usually do if I really have to ride in the rain, which I totally hate, then I just pull out my Crocs or my flip flops and ride through the rain with those, since they usually dry off in a couple of minutes. And when it stopped raining, I switch back to my normal cycling shoes instead. I knew this next question would come since it always comes during these Q&A sessions. <laughs> Steven asks how I deal with wild animals or bears. I think I've uh, gone over this a lot of times before, but here in Sweden we don't really have a lot of bears. Uh, I think we have around just below 3000 brown bears here in Sweden. And if you compare that with Alaska or Canada, where they have a couple of hundred thousand, 3,000 isn't really that much. So up where I live in Lapland, there aren't hardly any bears at all. So I, I usually don't take any precautions when I'm out touring, such as hang my food up in a tree or something when I'm out touring. Basically, I just make sure that I eat at one place and then I usually cycle on for half an hour or so and then I set up my camp spot for that night. So I don't eat and sleep in the same place. That is my golden rule of thumb. So I got this question from a guy called Hernani Cardoso, who's from Portugal and he's on a bike tour now here in Sweden. And he just landed in Stockholm and he was planning to take the train up to Norwich, which is in the north of Norway. 
but he was unsure if he was going to make it to Norway since the train is now cancelled due to the whole virus situation and he wants to know if the border is open for him when he finally gets there. Well I've heard different things from different people but I think the general rule is us Swedes aren't allowed into Norway. There are only a couple of uh, Swedes that live in the really southernmost part of Sweden that are allowed ironically but when they've made their way up to Norway the police have stopped them and uh, checked where they're from and since they have such a long way to drive there they have to be in a quarantine for 10 or 14 days I think since they have probably stopped in parts of Sweden that are not allowed into Norway so the whole system is really ironic <laughs> and I suspect that if you land in Stockholm and try to cycle over to Norway the same thing is probably going to happen to you as well since you have spent a couple of nights in Sweden. I can't really say what's going to happen but most certainly you're going to have to be in quarantine for 10 days when you get to Norway. So the next question is from someone called Krrrt. <laughs> Just came back from a bike tour here in Sweden and uh, realized that they are not so good at finding wild camp spots, especially after a long and tiresome day on the bike. Do you have any pro tips on how to find camp locations in Sweden? As many of you know, Sweden is kind of the mecca of wild camping since there are so many forests all over the country. So finding a wild camping spot, at least up where I live, is uh, really a piece of cake. If you're down in the southern part of Sweden, it can be a bit trickier. But there are still a lot of nice camp spots in the southern part of Sweden as well. Uh, what I usually aim for is either they have these sort of shelters all over Sweden and if you do a Google search for Vinskydd Karta you can find a lot of these free shelters in Sweden. Another great tip is to look out for beaches in uh, lakes. Usually there are nice camp spots along those lakes. A good tip here is to arrive around 8 or so in the evening where most people that have uh, taken their daily swim have gone home so you can set up your tent in solitude and don't have to be bothered by other people. We have this thing called Allemansrätten or every man's right to roam here in Sweden so you are allowed to camp at those beaches if there's not a sign that says uh, camping is prohibited at this specific beach. And when I camp in the forest, I usually just scout out a gravel road that goes from the main road. I go and follow that gravel road for a couple of hundred meters and then I just uh, look in and see if I can find a nice camp spot. And uh, this never goes wrong. I usually find a, a really nice camp spot within minutes. Another great tip is to cycle past a town or a village. So Maybe you do your shopping and you eat your dinner and then you cycle on for 10 or 15 more minutes and when you finally hit a nice forest you go into that forest and find your wild camp spot for the evening. Next question is from someone called Jester DXB. How do you plan and chart out a route? Do you plan meticulously beforehand or just pick a spot on the map and see how it goes? Well I'm actually going to do a beginner series coming this fall where I'm going to talk about all these things. How to prepare for a bike tour, how to plan for everything and how to pack your bike. But what I usually do is I map out a very loose route that I plan to follow. I usually don't book any campgrounds or anything. When I'm down in France or Spain I maybe check out a couple of campgrounds ahead of going there. But I don't book anything, I usually just wing it and if one of those campgrounds happen to be available when I'm going past there and uh, the time is right, I might stay there. But uh, as I said, I pretty much wing it when I go. It's pretty individual for all people. Some people like to have their route planned out exactly where they're gonna stay 
every night and there's nothing wrong with that either. But as I said, I'm uh, not the type. I usually just wing it as I go. And the last question of the day comes from commuting on two wheels. Hello, I'd like to know more about any mechanical problems you've run into on your bike tours or what one should know how to fix while on tour. And as I said, I'm gonna do a beginner series this fall on how to get set for your first bike tour and speaking about which type of tools you should bring on a bike tour is definitely one of the topics I'm gonna talk about in that series. So uh, you have to stay tuned for that answer coming this fall. Well, as I said in the beginning of this video, make sure that you have clicked the notification bell to be able to post me questions for the next Q&A video or just to watch photos from my upcoming tour along the wilderness road here in Sweden. Otherwise, until next time, have a good one.